Welcome back guys. We're going to be talking about parallel flow, serial flow, temperature gradients, uh, but essentially why I went from a center firing inlet to one at the each end and to discuss the benefits and the drawbacks of both of them. So this is the original block which had an inlet in here and some outlets over here. Which means the water went down here. Like that. Now it did it twice per side. something like that and of course the other way around as well now in the newer block which this is actually not my current block but good example all I do is go from here to here. Now, well, and this is essentially in parallel, and this is in a serial or series. Now, the reason for this is to have a look at a barb, really. So, this is a barb, and it's actually 10 mil. And if we measure the area of that, it is 78.54 millimeters. That's for a 10 mil barb. Now that is generally the narrowest part of your water cooling system. So the that you could say has the highest velocity. Well, that's assuming that it is the narrowest part, of course. But certainly it's a good place to, to start with. Any numbers bigger than that will be less restrictive than this, and any numbers smaller than that will be more restrictive. So if we look at this block here, that's what I've roughly worked out. Now the barb is here, and four of these equals 102 millimeters squared. That's the area. So velocity, in theory, is slightly lower than through the bar because it's slightly less restrictive. Now, if I was to go for a central inlet across here and then have the water coming down all of these like that and if we had some outlets over here we could then work out what the area is of it, the combined total of these which is now 20 outlets that was four before and that's what this number here is so it's now 510 millimeters squared now the the water coming into the barb is this one over here. So I think that's about 25, 26, something like that times greater than the barb. Now that means, um, sorry, not 25, it's probably 6. Let me get the calculator out. 510 divided by 78.54. Sorry, 6.5 times. So that must mean that the water, in theory, is flowing 6.5 times faster through the barb than it is through the channels, if we made it all parallel. Now, I'm trying not to harp on about it before, but the greater the velocity, the, the greater the cooling. So this would cool 
much worse if it was in parallel than if it was in series. So that's why this is in series, because the combined area of four of them is 102, which is, you know, closest to 78. Now, I couldn't make it any smaller than that, because the diameter of the barb, that's the space it took up. So if I went to a 5 central out inlet and outlet, it would have performed much worse, because the velocity would have just been cruising down here, instead of barreling down there through the S. Now, from people who might mention the time the water spends in the block, now the time is exactly the same. You've got water travelling faster for a longer distance, or water travelling slower for a shorter distance in multiple directions. So in my new block, which I have somewhere, I have done the same maths. So I've added up these, each one of the slots, and that adds up to be 108 millimeters. Now if I was to go to a outlet over here, an outlet over here, and one in the middle, and run my lovely water, love my, run my water this way, and this way, We have now halved the restriction, or doubled the paths for it to flow. So we've made this 105, now we've made it twice that. So we've made it 216-ish. Uh, or oh, 217. So do we want the water to flow at two, down at half the speed of this? Would halving the speed help improve performance of the block? When you could say 108 is already less restrictive than the barb feeding the block in the first place. Well, generally you would say, no, that's going to be a quite bad thing to do, would be to reduce the velocity through a block. Now let's have a look at a existing water block like you would buy for a normal CPU and let's compare that. So this is an EK water block which is essentially the same design as what I use. Uh, now I can't guarantee this is actually the size that was my, I can't seem to find my feeler gauges, but as far as I can work out the area of all these fins here is 20 millimeters. So that's really, really restrictive in comparison to the barb or my own blocks. And so, as I've said in the past numerous times, the way you can increase cooling is to increase velocity. They have massively increased the velocity through this block. And it's an interesting comparison to make with my blocks, which are very unrestrictive in comparison to this. I'd now like to talk about uh, barb location. Now in all of my blocks, which I have a straight through design, I have the barbs offset. Now there's a good reason for that. If they were in the centre, the water will want to take the path of least resistance, and the path of least resistance is straight through the middle. Now, as we've already discussed, the block is actually quite unrestrictive, so the water wants to just go straight through there. It does not want to go on this merry-go-ride drive all the way like this. It is much, much further, when you consider the size of the block, to go all the way around here. So the majority of the water will go between the path of least resistance, and therefore the majority of the cooling will go through the, through the middle. Now, as we've discussed in previous videos, it's incredibly important to cool your TEC equally. So this is why we have off-center barbs. In theory, if we have the barb here and here, the distance from here to here 
in here to here is also the same as the distance from here to here. And we have therefore ensured that you can have equal flow across the block because the distance is the same. Yeah, that's what we want. Well, it's not actually what we want. The reality is you actually do want to apply more cooling to the center than the outside uh, because the heat, the TZ ends here, actually less than that size. And it is beneficial to have it slightly in the center because you do want to cool, you know, have it to have a bias towards the center. The other thing is that when the water comes in here, it can go out this way, out this way. Now if the barb is right in the corner, it can go this way, but it can't go this way because it's banging into this piece of plastic. So it ends up being a little bit less restrictive and a bit more beneficial to have it slightly off-center like that. Now while we're talking about path of least resistance, the same thing actually happens uh, through the, the cutouts of the block or the fin height. The water wants to take the path of least resistance, which is going to be this line here-ish. It's not going to be this line here along the bottom. However, you actually want the coolest water getting all the way down here. That's what you want. You don't want it all going on the surface. So that's why you can get a benefit by having quite a, a narrow, low height block. Because you can force the water to the bottom where it's the hottest. If you have a very deep block, that will be exaggerated. More water will come along here and less will come away down here. I'd now like to talk about temperature gradients. Now, if we have our barbs in here and out here, you do get a temperature gradient. It's going to be coolest here, getting warmer, and of course getting the hottest on the way out. So this will end up being the coolest part of the block and the outside nearest the exits, surpri not surprisingly, will be the hottest. Now on a two channel barb, you have the water coming in. And it's going to be warm in the middle. The flow is actually going this way. And hottest over here. Which does create a temperature, a temperature gradient and frankly that happens no matter what kind of block you have, you've got an inlet in the outlet, it's going to be hottest near the outlet and warmest, uh, sorry, and coolest near the inlet. Now, while it, while having an inlet in the center would result in, in a more equal temperature gradient from one to the, from the left to the right, since the block actually does cool better in general, the temperature of this will be lower than in the original block over here. I'm now going to talk about center firing.
the advantages of it which is really seen greatly on CPU blocks now we'll pretend we're going to have cut a hole in here now one of the advantages is that the water is coming in, the, in this direction at speed now what it does is it wants to continue into the block and it smacks into the bottom here it then has to turn and go this way and this way now that is extremely good because as we've talked in the bottom uh, in the past this the water up here will be the coolest the water in the middle will be medium temperature and the water along as the bottom will be the hottest and it's hard to get this mixed but this here forces that to be mixed up and creates an average temperature it breaks down the boundary layer down here which is an incredibly good thing and that is one of the main benefits of using center firing so on CPU blocks since you're trying to cool something very small in theory the best performing blocks will always direct the water straight down the block and pummel the bottom of the, um, the channels and then send it out ensuring that it's mixing up nicely and removing this problem here which I've discussed in a few videos in the past but in a TEC block that um, need to cool a very small amount of area very well is not as desirable because you want to cool the block evenly and of course the block is much much larger so you can't really have a 62 millimeter inlet and if you did it would just be cruising along extremely slowly and not work out for you So there you go, I hope you guys enjoy that, and we will uh, see you on the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.